Hi, I'm David from Electric Teaching. I'd like to show you how to complete the square with some uh, 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 to find the solution to a quadratic equation. Uh, this is a quadratic equation, and hopefully, I'm going to show you a way to make it do to to excuse me. Hopefully, I'll show you a way to solve it faster than the quadratic formula. Um, always remember we want to set it equal to zero especially if we have an x squared and a linear term like the 6x term when we have a quadratic and linear term you definitely want to set it equal to zero first step is always to, I like to tell the students to move C out of the way get it on the other side of the equation or if you're doing this for graphing just set it aside and then open up a spot for the completed square last constant term to be which would be in the trinomial the constant would be right here so I'm gonna subtract 2 I'm gonna subtract 2 from both sides move it on to the other side algebraically I'm now gonna take half of B and I'm gonna put it directly into the binomial squared this is the idea we're trying to complete the square with the leading idea of x squared and 6x. The 2 can be here, but the easiest way is to just move it out of the way so it's easier to do the calculations and think about the left side being the completed square. Now the reason I put this box here is that it reminds me that I want whatever I add to that side I better add to the other side too. And a student just recently suggested that I put the box on both sides. I thought, all right, that's a great idea. I'm going to do that. So what would the last term be if I was to square out this binomial? You could think FOIL, but you could also think that the, there's a formulaic way of squaring this out. And the last term is this number squared. That would be 9. So there was no 9 on, the, on that side of the equation. So to do algebra, you better add 9 to both sides. I call that adjusting it to balance it. All right, back to the equation. Let's simplify. The left side is clearly everything we have up there. So I'm bringing it down. The right side with the 9 added makes 7. Over here, I tell the students that if you can see the light, there's only two steps to get x by itself. We need to undo the furthest thing outside here, the square, and then we're going to undo the plus 3, and then we'll have x all by itself. So I'm going to undo the square with the square root. Whenever you say take the square root on both sides, you should say take the plus or minus square root on both sides. So if I take the square root on this side, cancels out the squared. Square root on this side, just rewrite with plus or minus. Last step, subtract 3, and we pretty much are done, ready to box the answer here. Okay, And you can see then we have an axis of symmetry. You should recognize there's your axis of symmetry too, because this, is a per this parabola is a sense basically shifted left 3. Um, left 3, so your axis of symmetry is left 3. And then you got x-intercepts a little bit to the right and a little bit to the left. That's what the plus or minus means. So on the graph, you now know your x-intercepts are, uh, are on uh, just left and right of the symmetry line at x equal negative 3. If I was to do the quadratic formula on this one, it wouldn't be too much more difficult, but I want to show you what the difference is. Negative b, I'm doing the quadratic formula, negative b plus or minus square root 36 Okay, minus the 2 times the 4, uh, time, excuse me, minus 4ac, so minus 4 times 2 times 1. So that's then minus a 8, minus 8 all over 2 times 1, which is 2. We would simplify, and you can see then if you distribute, and this is one of the things you got to be careful with the quadratic formula, you better distribute, so you got a negative 3 plus or minus the square root of, let's see, what's that, 28 over over, excuse me, 2, over 2. That should have been just one fraction bar there, over 2. Well, then the 28, you got to simplify a little bit. There's a 7 and a 4 multiplier in there, 7 times 4. So with the 7 times 4 as the multipliers, the 4 can come out. So now you've got a negative 3 plus or minus the um, 2 root 7 over the 2 and now you can see the 2's will cancel so now we're back to the original answer so it's, I find that completing the square and this is the key when the linear term has an even number or the where you're gonna take half a b is even you're gonna find that it's almost always nicer to just complete the square rather than the quadratic formula alright let's try one a little quicker now move the C term to the other side, move the C term to the other side and set up 
kind of a little reminder box of what we're doing. We're completing the square. So if I would subtract 4 on both sides, and I think it's a good idea to remind ourselves that we're putting in an object here, a value here, and a value there to, to make it equal. Half a b, half a b, negative 4, excuse me, x minus 4. That x didn't come out very pretty. x minus 4 quantity squared. Okay, and let's see, half of b's in our binomial, that means if I was to square it out, there would be a 16 added to each side of the equation. A 16 added to each side of the equation. Now I can rewrite what this is equal to, 16 minus 4, and we get 12. All right, a couple steps left here. I'm going to square root. x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus square root, plus or minus, excuse me, get a little sloppy with the pin there, let me try that again, x minus 4 is equal to plus or minus the square root of 12, and then we'll add 4, x is equal to, if I add 4, I'll put it in front so it looks like the quadratic formula and gives me the symmetry line in front, which makes it nice. And then I'm going to go plus or minus the square root of 12. But inside the 12, is that a 3 and a 4? I'm always looking for square values to pull out of a radical. 4 squares, so when it comes out, it's a 2. So now I've got 2 root 3. I always like to either double underline or box my answers from good habit, too. Let's try one more, a little more difficult here. All right, new rule here. If you got an, an A that is not equal to 1 in front, what you're going to want to do is factor it out of just the front two terms and only the constants, only the constants. Leave the x squared and the x. That's really important because if you're a good factoring, factor, excuse me, good factorer, if that is a phrase, then you probably want to factor out the x too to be completely factored, but don't. It's a trick we're doing, so just do the first part that we need, which is to factor the 2 out. Factoring the 2 out, that leaves x squared plus 4x. Double check. I always double check my distribution when I factor. It seems to check. It looks good. Notice I left the x's in there. I'm still going to make the box. I'm still going to move the constant that's already here out of my way to make this a little easier by algebraically adding 23, adding 23 to both sides. So that's a positive 23, and again, I'll put that little box over here to remind myself this. All right, let's complete the square. Just bring down the negative 2. Take half a b like we normally have done. Remember, it's a new b compared to the original b. That's an often a mistake that students will make because they're not watching that part. And then when we add what's uh, missing here, when we add the missing part to complete the square, so this is an x plus 2 times x plus 2, a quantity squared, we need to add a 4. But students, and even sometimes teachers, will miss the negative 2 distributed to there. So in a sense, we really not, have not added 4. We have really added negative 2 times 4. So over here, I'm not going to put a plus 4. I'm going to put a minus 8, the true value of what has been added to this side of the equation. And you can see that since I put the 4 inside of a multiplier. Now, over on the other side then, let's see. On the other side, we now have equals 23 minus 8, 15. The other ones were two steps away from solving this one. Looks to be three steps. I need to divide first because that's a multiplier outside of group parentheses that I need to remove. Okay, So we're going to divide, then square root, then subtract. I always tell my students to see how to get x by itself before putting pen on paper. That way you know where you're going and you're not just guessing. All right, dividing by two on both sides. I'm not showing my work kind of like old school, hoping that you know what I'm doing here. You can see and also hear what I'm doing. But I'm dividing by two on both sides. I'm square rooting. Square rooting, almost done now, because now I've got the square off. Ooh, interesting, plus or minus. Don't forget, when we square root both sides, it's a plus or minus. But it's not just 15 over 2, which is a fraction and interesting, but it's negative. And if you've been working with imaginary numbers, then you know you got an i coming out of there. Plus, we might have to do some rationalization. Last step to get it by itself. Not to finish the answer, though, because we've got to clean this up. I'm going to go ahead and pull the i out now. 
and then I'm going to rewrite this as square root of 15 over square root of 2. The rules of radicals, you might remember, you can break radicals up over division and multiplication, but you cannot break them up over addition and subtraction. So what I'm doing is over the division of 15 divided by 2, I am breaking the radicals up. Some teachers will not want this in this form, including me most of the time. We want to what we call rationalize it, rationalize it to present this final answer. Okay, so now final answer is x is equal to negative 2 plus or minus we have a root 30 over 2i, a root 30 over 2i. So root 30 over 2, not a square root of 2 because the radical times radical made radical 4 or the radicals cancel in a sense and leave 2. Okay, and then we always want to put the i term last so that it's in that complex form, a plus bi form. Now you can see what the b value is in case you have to go there. Well, I hope you understand that completing the square can really offer you some different solutions to the quadratic formula. Notice I did this one without really the need of a calculator anywhere. And if you were going to multiply out the determinant with this one, which would have been a big negative number because we would have been 4 times 23 times 2 and really working with big numbers. And so I think completing the square is something that can be used to avoid using the quadratic formula, especially with those big numbers. I'm David from Electric Teaching. I hope that this has helped.